Hello, this is uh, Mr. Zebron Ernest, a teacher from Arimuntas Islamic Seminary. And this is uh, the discussion which will be about Form 1 worksheet, Form 1 maths worksheet uh, for the students who are just uh, in holidays due to corona uh, kind of infections. So this will be the the marking scheme for maths form one. Now, are we trying to do the questions quickly? Because I believe we have tried most of the questions here. So uh, we'll be using like kind of, kind of 45 minutes to do these questions. So let us now uh, see and get started, all right? Uh, So let us begin. Oh. All right, there we go. Now, uh, question number one is um, work out the answer for two plus 16 divided by two plus six. So what we basically do here is to use board mass. Okay, so this we use uh, uh, we use board mass. Okay, so uh, so we use board mass. That means we we'll have to start with brackets. So we have sixteen divided by two. This is eight. So add two, add six. Two plus eight. That will be 10, 10 plus six, this will be 16. So the answer here is 16. Next question is put brackets in the calculation below to make it correct. So here we use trial and error method. Uh, for example, we try putting brackets here. This will be two plus six, two plus 16 will be 18, 18 divided by two will be Nine, nine plus six cannot be equal to four. So you try again here. Then you do 16 divided by two, that will be eight. Eight plus two, that will be 10. 10 plus six will not be equal to four. Okay, so keep trying. Uh, try the brackets here and see. Two plus six is eight. Then we go for division. 16 divided by eight will be two, two plus two will be equal to four. So the brackets will be there, right? Uh, the next question is, uh, question number two says, when y is one, when y equals to one, then which expression below has the largest value? Okay, so put a ring around it. So y, equals to one. So when y is one, this will be three plus one, this will be four, 10 minus one, this will be nine. And then uh, one square, this will be one. Three y means three times one, that gives you three. Y divided by two, but one, this will be one divided by two, this will be 0 0.5. Okay, now the question is, which expression below has the largest value? Okay, here we have four, here we have nine, one. Now, which number is the largest? The largest number is nine, but remember we have to put a ring around the expression. So the expression is 10 minus one, so you put a ring there. When y is four, which expression below has the largest value? Put a ring around it. Okay, then y is four, so you do three plus four, that makes seven. Then 10 minus four, this makes six. And then y is four. So four squared, that becomes 16. And three y means three times y, but y is four, that makes 12. 
y is 4, so 4 divided by 2, this makes 2. Now, uh, which of the expression will be giving you the largest value? Okay, so you compare these answers, 7, 6, 16, which answer is the largest, 16 is the largest. Now, the question is, which expression below has the largest value? Put a ring around it, so the ring will be around y squared. Okay, write a number to make the sentence below. Write a number to make the sentence below to be true. When y equals to a certain number, then the expression three plus y has the, large, has the larger value, or has the larger value than the expression three y. Okay, so here we assume a number, for example, when y is zero, for example. Okay, you just take any, 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 any value here, just assume any value, y equals to zero, so this would be, then you compute this one. 3 plus y, but y is 0, 3 plus 0 will be, uh, will be 3, okay? So here, just do 3 plus 0, this makes 3, okay? But 3 times 0, this is 0. So when y equals to 0, the expression 3 plus y has the larger value than the expression 3y. Yeah, it's true. When y is 0, 3 plus y will be 3, and three times y will be three times zero. So this expression has the larger value. So, but, but then you can try any other number and substitute it here and see which, uh, uh, which, which value is the largest. Okay, so I try zero, but still you can try any number. Okay, question number three. Look at the equation. Okay, this is the equation. 14n equals to 98 work out the value of 140 times n. So from here, work out the value of n, this will be 14n equals to 98. Find the value of n by dividing by 14 on both sides. So this will be giving you, this will be giving you n equals to seven. Okay, now use this value to work out 140 times n. Now, 140n means 140 times n. This will be 140 times, but I got n is seven, so you substitute there. So this will be uh, 140 times seven, this will be uh, zero, 28, this will be nine. So here I write 980. Okay, uh, you can try with the calculator. Uh, this will be, okay, but the answer looks to be correct to me. So that's all. Okay, now we can go to next question. We can go to next question. Then the next question is 3B. Okay, 3B. 3B is, we got the value of 14, any plus one. Okay, we already know the value of N. So what do we do then? So what we do is basically 14, N plus one. Then we have, but N equals seven. So this will be 14, seven plus one to work out this will be 14 times, seven plus one is eight. Okay, then let us try to pull out the calculator over there. Okay, one minute. Want to save time to pull the calculator. Okay. So here we go. This is our calculator. Now we have 14 times eight. What is this? This will be uh, 32, then 112. So here you write 112. To confirm, you can use a calculator and do the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> All right.
uh, a boat can be hired for children's parties. Okay, the formula below shows the cost. Now this is the formula that the cost equals to uh, 13.50 pounds multiplied by the number of children plus 23 pounds. What is the cost of the party for eight children? Okay, so the cost, the cost formula says 13.50 pounds multiplied by the number of children, but the number of children here is eight, then you add 23 pounds, okay? So the cost will be equal to I don't know why the my calculator once is like keeping me in trouble. It's not working. Perhaps there are some. Let me let me try one more last time. Okay. Right. So here we go. Now, what is the question? 13.50 times eight. Okay, 13, uh, put it here. Yes, so it will be 13.50.50 multiplied by eight, multiplied by eight equals to, then you add 23. You see that? So this will be 131 pounds. So you write uh, 131 pounds. That will be your answer. Now, uh, a different a different children's party cost. So here we know the cost. Now, how many children were at the party? Okay. So we go back to the formula, which says cost equals to uh, 13.50 times the number of children. Okay, 13.50 13, 13 times the number of children. Now here the number of children is not known, then plus 23. But the cost is known, is 225.50. That would be equal to 13.50 times N last 23. Now this becomes a normal equation which somebody uh, will work it as follows. This is positive 23. When it goes there, it will be 225.50 minus 23. That equals to 13.50 N. All right, so do that calculation. Okay, so what are we going to get will be uh, 225.50 minus 23. So we do that. This calculator is annoying me, I don't know why. Uh, let me try one more last time. Then it, Otherwise, I'll have to abandon, I will try to abandon this carpet because it's really eating my head. Okay. Let's close some few applications there. Applications are loading. Try to close that, yeah. Go back to the carpet. Uh, Do it one more last time. Okay. Uh, put it over here. So the question was 225.50 minus 23. Use a calculator to do that. 225.50 minus 23. Okay, so that gives two zero gives two zero two point five. So this will be two two zero two point five equals to thirteen point five zero. And 
Now to find the value of n, we'll have to divide. So we have something like this, 202. Okay, you have something like this, 202.5 equals to 13.50 multiplied by n, so we need to find the value of n, so we have to divide by 13.50 on both sides, 13.50 on both sides, so this will cancel. So the value of n, n stands for the number of children, will be equal to uh, 13.50 It's physical calculator. I have to get a physical calculator. Hello? Can I have a calculator from there? Hello? Hello? Can I have a calculator there? All right, so one minute, one minute. What's it here, here? Right, thank you. So we have 202.5 divided by 13.50. Oh wow, we are getting a whole number. This is for 15. Okay. So how many children were at the party? The answer is 15. Okay, so far so good. All Okay, let us proceed. Okay, so we have to go to the next question. All right, next question is, write numbers in the boxes so that the fractions are in size order. Write numbers in the boxes so that the fractions are in size order, all right? So my preference here is to convert these fractions which we have and put them as a decimal. So this will give you one divided by four, 0 0.25, and then three divided by five will be equal to somewhere around 0 0.6. Okay, now we try putting, for example, one here, and then see, see if we can get a number bigger than that. So what do we do? One divided by seven, we are getting 0 0.1428, so that is not. So we try the number which is bigger than, than one, say try two, and then do two divided by seven, two divided by seven equals to 0 0.28, yeah. So at least two we agree there. So two is correct. We can keep on trying another number. So we have one, one. So the answer here we had somewhere around 0 0.2. Uh, we had somewhere around 0 0.29. Mm -hmm. If we correct to two decimal places. Okay, so this is 0 0.6, this is 0 0.29, and uh, this will be uh, 1 divided by 2, this makes 0 0.5, so which is smaller than 0 0.6, but uh, bigger than 0 0.29. And here we can try this three, 3 divided by 5 equals 0 0.6. Now here we can try, say, uh, we have to get a number which is bigger than 0 0.6. So now let us try 3. 2 divided by 3. Yep, equals to 0 0.67. If you try 3 here, this will give you 0 0.67. If you round to two decimal places. So, so the idea is to this number which comes here should be the smallest. And this, uh, this fraction here should be the largest of all. That is the idea.
Okay, should be the largest of all. All right, so far so good. Let us go to next question. Okay, the this question is talking about the diagram which shows uh, a prism. Okay, so this is a prism. Now the centimeter square grid below shows part of the net of the prism. Complete the net accurately. Okay, so the net, usually we have to start with the base of the prism itself. Now I have to show uh, how the base look like, okay? Let me try to show the bears. So we go this way, and then we go that way, and then we go this way. See that? Okay, so let us try to make it look proper. Okay, and this one move somewhere. All right, so. Uh, this is how this diagram was supposed to look like. See, it's now transparent. So this angle here is 90 degrees. Okay, now where is the base? So normally we start drawing the base of the prism. So the base will be somewhere here. The base will be somewhere here. So you start drawing the base. When you're drawing the net, of any prism, you start looking at the base. So there is your base. Okay, so the base is three by two. So it's already drawn and it's here. Uh, you see that from here to here is two, from here to here is three. Just count the boxes. Now from here to there is also two. And there is your base, which is two by, two by three. And you can see it's two by three. Then after drawing the base, then you attach the, to the base, you attach the other sides. Now, how many sides can you see on this figure? We can see the, uh, we can see five faces here, or five sides. We have this face here, and another face is triangular in shape, and we have two of them. We have this triangle here, which will be attached at the bottom of the base. And it's already done, it's already done. So we can use a different color to show that. So this is the triangle, which is already done for you. You see? And it's here, it's, 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 it's here. It's, somewhere around here. This is the, the triangle which I'm talking about. You, you attach it at the bottom of the base. Right, then you attach another triangle which will be at the top of the base. See that? Then you attach the other triangle at the, at the top of the base and the same triangle. And this triangle is, as you can see, this, the, the previous triangle was, uh, the previous triangle was, you can see that, was uh, four by three. And you have to count the boxes. Uh, four down and then three, okay? So something like that, okay. So the other triangle will be here. Can see that this is the other triangle which I'm talking about. There you go. And it will be attached somewhere here. Let me try to change uh, the color, but the color will be the same. Why? Because those two triangles are the same it's in terms of side. You see, they are the same in size. All right? Then we have uh, let us see other faces. We have the 
rectangular faces. The rectangular faces are here. The rectangular faces are here. There are two of them. One is here. Okay. And this will be, this rectangle will be attached to the right hand side of the base. So it will be attached somewhere here. So let us make it green in color. So it will be attached on the right. Now, how far will you be going? It is two by five. It is two by five. So this is already two. So you have to go one, two, three, four, five. Stop there. Oh. You have to do it's two, two by five. So you go this way. This is two. This is two. That is two. Then go five long. One, two, three, four, five. And there, let me check. One, two, three, four, five. Then go up. Same two, then close down. There you go. Now, another, another face will be this face here. Let me show you this face here. Uh, this time, let me go for pink. Mm, uh, yep, let us use pink. Okay, so this time will be that face. Okay, I hope you can see that. And then it is, it is two by four, two by four. So two is already here. And then you go one, two, three, four. So two is here. That is two. One, two, three, four. Stop there. Go up. Close the shape. See? But this color does not show. I don't know why. Let me try the other color. Uh, try this. Okay, okay, Vinny. Just normal color. Make it red. And see how it goes. Yep. Okay. So this is your net. Your net will look like this. Uh, let us go to the next question. I'll go to the next question. Complete this diagram so that the three numbers in each line add to eight. Okay, they should add to eight. Okay, let me start with uh, this part here. Uh, you go this way. Those two numbers should add to eight. Okay, so we have to get the missing number here. We have to get the missing number. So the missing number and they have to add to eight. So plus 3.5, three and a half means 3.5, then plus half means 0 0.5. The answer should be eight. Take the missing number as a letter, so it will be x plus 3.5 plus 0 0.5. This will be somewhere around uh, four. And this equals to 8.0 anyway. So x will be equal to eight minus four. The answer will be four. So the missing number here will be equal to four. Okay. And this same idea will continue here. Uh, this way. Okay. Oops. The same question continues this way here. That the numbers in a line should add up to should add up to eight. So try this one here. Now we know this will be three plus four plus unknown. The answer should be equal to eight. So automatically, the work becomes easy. So here will be equal to one. So then we do. We'll go for this one here. Yeah? Uh, the numbers in a line should add up equal to eight. So this will be another calculation. So this will be, uh, we have 
five and a half, this is 5.5 5 plus one plus a missing number here, but the answer should be equal to eight. Okay, so 5.5 5 plus one, this would be 6.5 plus a missing number equals eight. In other words, the missing number will be equal to eight minus 6.5, and the answer will be 1.5. So the missing number here will be 1.5 or one and half, one, one of two. So this will be one, one of two. Let me check, this will be one, one, two, seven, yes. All right, so far so good, then uh, take all that. Go to next question. Uh, look at this information about recycling. 25 large plastic bottles can be recycled to make one fleece jacket. Write the missing numbers in this sentence. 200 large plastic bottles can be recycled to make dash fleece jackets, okay? So this is just a matter of proportion. 25, so right here, 25 large plastic bottles equals to, can be recycled to make one, one fleece jacket. 200 large, so 200 large plastic bottles will be equal to how many? So you cross multiply. In other words, it will be this number, 200 times one divided by 25. So 200 times one divided by 25, this will be equal to by 25, this makes one, by 25, this is eight, eight times one, the answer is eight. So here you write eight. Okay, so uh, that's all. Now in a survey, nine out of 10 people said they would like to recycle more. What percentage of people said they would like to recycle more? Okay, fine. So we have, write this expression here is a fraction. So nine out of 10 means nine over 10. Now we want to make it as a percentage. So we have to multiply by 100%. And then we simplify this. And the answer becomes nine, nine times 10. This will be equal to 90%. So here you simply write 90. Okay, so far so good. And then now we we'll go to next question. Okay, so the next question is this. The graph shows a rectangle. This is a rectangle which is drawn on a coordinate grid. Now, write the coordinates of point P. So writing the coordinates of point P will be, okay, this point is 12,5. 12,5 meaning that this point here is 12 and this point here is five. Okay, now what, what are the coordinates of Point P. So what is the value of X? The value of X will be 12, comma. What is the value of Y? The value of Y will be equal to this number you see here. The value of Y will be equal to nine. See, so X comma Y, the value of X will be 12 and the value of nine will be, I mean the value of Y will be nine. So in other words, the coordinates of P will be, the coordinates of point P will simply be 12 comma nine. Just record this number here. Okay. Good. Okay, write the coordinates of point P. Okay, okay. Number 10 is write multiples to make this Additions correct. Okay. Multiples of three. Multiples of three are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and so on. 
Multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. Multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Okay. Now, which multiples of three will you choose here? Okay, the, it's, it's already started for you. This is 12. So 12 plus which multiple out of these will give you a multiple five? So in other words, you choose from here. So 12, they have chosen 12 plus which multiple of eight will add together to give a multiple of five. Okay, 12 plus, let us try eight here. So to be 12 plus eight is 20. Now eight is here. Now the question is, is this 20 available here? The answer is yes. So we got it correct. All right, so we got correct. This eight is correct. Another one is multiple of three, multiple of three, plus which multiple of four gives you 30. Okay, so we can try multiple of three, uh, say 16 plus which number gives 30? 16 plus 14, Okay, should get 30 here. And 30 is a multiple of five, correct. So we have to figure out here. Suppose we try uh, 20, this is 12, multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 18. So we have 18 here. Now 18 plus 12, okay, multiple of three, we have 18, is 18 a multiple of three? The answer is yes. 18 plus uh, 12, is 12 a multiple of four? Yes, 12 a multiple of four. So 18 plus 12, the answer is 30. Yep, yep, so we got it correct. So 18, 12 there. Right, so this should be gone. Good, so uh, next is, next question is this question here. This one, done, this one. Yes, this question here. Look at the diagram below. Okay, I'm looking at this diagram. What is the question? Look at the diagram. This is the question. A, B is a straight line. A, B is a straight line. Work out the size of angle K. The size of angle K. Okay. So they said A, B is a straight line. This is a straight line. So all angles, all angles on a straight line have to add up to 180 degrees. They have to add and give a total of 180 degrees. So you know what it means? Just follow me here. I'm putting this angle as unknown and I'm calling it X. So 130 plus X, but remember we are looking for how much K is, okay? So 130 plus X should give you 180 degrees. So my X will be 180 degrees, take away 130. So X will be equal to 50, see that? So this angle here is 50. But that, that is not our question. Our question is to work out the value of K. Now, there is a theorem which says any outside angle will be equal to the sum of the other two interior angles. The angle formed outside will be equal to the sum of two other inside opposite angles. So you know what it means? I mean to say 50 plus K, 50 plus K 
equals 85, equals 85. That is a theorem that any angle which is outside the triangle will be equal to the sum of the other two angles which are inside opposed angles. See that? So in that case, 85 will be equal to K plus 50. So to get the value of K, you do 85 minus 50. And this gives you K equals to 35. See that? That is your K. So K equals to 35 degrees. All right. Uh, I add expression N and N plus 2. Put a ring around the expression that shows the result. So that is question number 12. I add expression n, add it to n plus two. So here we collect like terms. This is n plus n makes one plus one makes two n plus two. Now two n plus two, we try to check here. Do we have two n plus two? Yes, the answer is here. So put a ring around the expression, okay? Now I multiply the expression. Now this is multiplication. So and most of the students will write like this, n multiply by n plus two. If you do this way without putting the brackets, you are wrong. So you have to put the brackets. Or you can write it this way, n plus two. Now do we have n, n plus two? Yes, we have n times n plus two. Put a ring there. Okay. And that page ends there. We go to the next page. We go to the next page. The next page is, here are the equations of straight lines. Y equal to six, Y equals to two, X equal to three, X equal to four. The intersection of these straight lines form the vertices of a rectangle. What is the perimeter of this rectangle? Okay, so they're asking for the perimeter of the rectangle. First, we have to plot y equal to six, y equal to two, x. So we need something like a coordinate grid, a coordinate geometry grid, a coordinate geometry grid, which will look like this. Let me try to find a wonderful space to do this page. Okay. That is done. It is done now. So we, let us move this page here. Okay, then plot the lines. So we have the y axis and we have the x axis. Okay, let us level this. We have the y axis here and we have the x axis here. Okay, so we have y equal to six. Y equal to six, we can put laugh free that this is y equal to six and we have y equal to two, somewhere here. So this is zero, two will be here, six will be somewhere. This is just a rough sketch. And then we have x equal to three, x equal to three, we can assume that this is x equal to three and this is x equal to four. Now. The are saying that the intersection of the lines, of the straight lines from the vertices of rectangle. Okay, y equal to six. So we make a line which will show you this is where y equal to six will be passing and you label that. This is y equal to six. And you have another line, y equal to six, y equal to two. So make a line and call it y equal to two. So this will be y equal to two. And you can just uh, put it somewhere here or down there. This is your y equal to six, y equal to two. And then make a line x equal to, th x equal to three. It would be uh, that y, I mean x equal to three. And you label that x equal to three, and then you do x equal to four, 
just your line and then label that x equal to 4 okay now can you see that somewhere there are the intersections of those two lines are forming the they're forming the what we call the rectangle okay so this line x equal to 3 y equal to 6 meet they meet here and also they meet here and also they meet somewhere there okay so can you see that the point where they meet they are forming something we call a rectangle which they are talking about let me show you clearly this is the point where you see that it doesn't look nice to me so let me adjust this goes here that goes there okay that's the rectangle which they're talking about all right but for demonstration purpose that looks good now uh, remember the perimeter okay hold that okay the perimeter of any shape is perimeter is add all the sides perimeter equals to adding all sides adding all sides okay so we have to find out each side will be equal to how much so add all the sides so this is six minus two this side will be four this is four minus three this side will be one so from here to here will be one here to here will be four here, will be four. So this will be four, this will be one. From here to here will be the difference of six and two, which is four. From here to here will be the difference of four and three. The difference is one. So the sides are four, one, four, one. The difference. I got four here by taking six minus two. I got one here by taking four minus three. So simple like that. So perimeter will be four plus one plus four plus one. So four plus one, four plus one plus four plus one. This makes five plus five, this makes 10. So here you write 10 units. The shaded rectangle is twice as long as its, the shaded rectangle is twice as long as its wide, the perimeter of the rectangle is 30 centimeter. All right, so the, the shaded rectangle is twice as long as it's wide. So if the width is say M, the length will be twice as long as it is wide. So this will be twice, means two times M, which is two M. Now perimeter is adding all the sides. Now the sides are M, plus 2m plus m plus 2m there is your perimeter but the perimeter is given so 30 which is the perimeter will be equal to m plus 2m plus uh, m plus 2m can you see that m plus 2m plus m plus 2m so this will be 30 equals to m plus, this is one, one plus two is three plus one. So this will be three, four, six m, okay? Remember m stands for width. So divide by six, what is happening with my digital pen here? It's annoying me, divide by six, divide by six. So that cancels out. So you find that M, which is weight, equals five. So how about the length? Remember the length was uh, twice M. So two times five 
that is 10. See that? Now, what is the question? The question is, what is the area or area of the rectangle will be equal to, very good question, area equals to length times width. Now I know the length is 10 and the width is five. So 10 times five, this makes 50. So this will be 50 centimeters square. Okay, question number 14, the price of a coat. The price of a coat is 65 pounds. In a cell, the price is reduced by 15%. What is the sale price of the coat? Oh, okay, there is a reduction. Okay. There is reduction. One minute. Becca. Nakazkido. Okay. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Now we continue doing. Okay, so this will be the price of a court is 65 pounds. In a cell, the price is reduced by 15%. What is the sale price of the court? Okay. Uh, the price of a court is that much reduced by. So what we do, first do 15% multiplied by 65. How much money do you get? Okay. By 5, 3, by 5, 20, by 5, 13, by 5, 4. How much that? This will be uh, 39 divided by 4. What is this? Okay, 39 divided by 4. 39 divided by 4. You see, we are getting 9.75. This is pounds. Now, reduced by means take 65 pounds minus 9.75. What is the answer? Okay, 65 minus 9.75, you'll be getting 55, 55.25. Reduced by means decreased, means decreased. To, so to decrease means minus. Okay, that's all. Okay, I'm left with some few questions here. Okay, so here we go. All right. Should I continue later? Yes, okay. I'll be coming back to you. Stay tuned. Right, bye.